All right, here is a very uh, excited review that I'm ex super excited to bring to you uh, for Mastermind's R48 Optus Pexus Supercop, uh, a.k.a. their IDW Optimus Prime, and it's very nice. Like I said, the, uh, the, the vehicle mode is a little weird, only because I'm not used to thinking of Optimus in like this Cybertron mode, but the more I play with it, the more I really dig it. I dig the big wheels on the front. I like the wheels on the back, but like it's uh, there's certain angles where it looks a little awkward, but it actually is a fairly nicely uniform uh, truck, especially from this from when you look at it directly side on. Again, not a normal truck, a Cybertronian truck, but still a pretty cool truck on that nonetheless. It's got big wheels. He rolls. Just be careful rolling it because depending on how you transform it, there's very there, it might be able to get this to sit up a little higher, but there's very minimum amount of clearance here on this. Uh, Plate, which ends up on his back, his backside. It is technically his butt here, so it's not the end of the world if something gets scuffed. It's not, if you put it in display in robot mode, you're not really going to see it that often, but it is there. There now the the one minor, and it's a very minor complaint on this guy that I have to that I want to start off with is like down here. These are the handles for his matrix core, and they just kind of tab on to these hip plates, and uh. And they're secure. It's nice that they have a place to store, but uh, they, they do tend to, it's not hard to pop them off. Now, he does have a core in his chest. I'll go ahead and open this up because it's a little easier now. We'll show it in robot mode, but uh, he has a core in his chest, but it is just the golden core and then you attach the handles to it. Again, we'll show that all off. And I like the look of the core in his chest and the mechanism. Uh, I wish it were a little bit more functional in robot mode without having to re untransform some things. But again, we'll get to that. Um, but all in all, like I said, it's very nicely designed. It looks good. It is possible once you've got him transformed, if you have these doors open, you can display him with the chest open and the, and the core inside there showing. But it just takes a little bit of effort once you've gotten to robot mode. But all in all, very nice and, uh, and fun. He comes with his little bio card, hard plastic, like a credit card, which is always really nice. You don't have to worry about him getting uh, roughed up or bent up. Uh, his instruction manual, uh, along with... Uh, an alternate comic where he leads the Dinobots down. I don't want to spoil it, but he, you see his uh, newly newly minted leader, Optus Pexus, uh, leading a mission. Um, you get a, the, the box is nice. It's got a little 10th anniversary reformatted golden sticker on it, which is cool. And uh, D Amazing is, uh, apparently did this pose for it. I don't know if this is his photo or if he just came up with the pose and ended up on the box art. But he was talking about that, and that's pretty cool. So if you watch the Amazing's videos, and you should, um, that's his box art cover. And then some various poses on the back, as usual, from the lovely uh, Ian Reed. And, uh, yeah, good solid box and, and a nice little display piece. And then in the box, you also get, in a Ziploc baggie, there's a couple of replacement fingers. Uh... I don't know that they're needed. I haven't had any issues with the fingers, but in case you do damage one of them, there's two extra uh, jointed fingers in a baggie. You also get a second set of these guns, although I don't, I don't know how easy it is to tell, but it's it's actually like more of a... These are black, and this is more of a dark gray. So depending on which guns you want them to have, you can put either one on there. But you get two sets of those. Right, so let's transform him because he's pretty dang awesome. We'll go ahead and pop these off, pop the guns apart, untap them from each other. They're the same mold, they just uh, the mirror mold, they peg together like that with these little tabs on the bottom of, of the ammo stock, I guess, ammo clip, and then they extend. You don't have to extend them, but you can, and then you fold the handle down, and there you've got the gun. Also, my gray ones were... They, they still are a little tough, but they do finally move. But the, the, when I first opened the box, these were really, really hard to uh, to get, extend. But So just be on the lookout for that. But extend the guns, and we'll set them off to the side. Now to transform it, we'll go ahead and pop these off. Th these end up in the same position. Like, they're in the same position here in vehicle mode that they end up in robot mode. But because they cover this panel, and we're going to open these panels up, uh, it tends to pop them off, so you go ahead and take them off. Now, you don't have to. You can fully transform them with these uh, uh, matrix holder handles on. But, again, it's easier to just take them off and set them to the side, even if you decide you want to keep them stored on him in robot mode, just because 
as you're m manipulating things, it's not hard at all to pop these things off and you don't want them flying off anywhere, so set those off to the side. And here's the core vehicle mode. And to transform them, we start off, you take these, uh, these blue panels here and crack open the outer one. And also, note when going back to vehicle mode, mine wasn't quite lined up and these were sitting a little higher. Make sure when you line these up, or actually it wasn't this, it was this was sitting up a little high, the blue part, and it wasn't allowing the guns to peg onto this properly because you got to make sure there's some little tabs inside these flaps that need to plug into these slots on the arm. So when you're going back and you fold these around, make sure you've got that lined up so this, you can see how this blue now sits flush with the red before, if you don't tab that in, it'll sit up too high and it'll keep you from pegging the guns on. But go ahead and open these up and then pull the whole upper torso out like this and we'll get to the legs. And right off the bat, we're gonna start doing some really cool stuff with the legs, because there's already some, there's some really neat uh, transformation bits in here. So go ahead and split the legs and open these panels up. Bring his feet down, and then the feet actually come back. Uh, this is one of the, the, the joints, but you bring the foot forward, and you wanna bring it all the way back so it sits there in the leg properly, where the ankle's sitting properly on the leg versus way up here. So bring that foot back and then extend the legs down. Pull the blue lower legs out. And then, and here's where like you start seeing some really cool stuff because one, bring these little shin pistons or knee pistons down and you fold this up and in and make sure that that little, the blue part of this piston fits into that slot there and then fold the other shin around and plug them back together with that piece sandwiched between them. And then these pieces are on a dual hinge here. So make sure that this inner hinge goes in and then collapse that whole panel into the leg, <laughs> which is really cool. It extends up for vehicle mode. They're extended, fully extended like that. And then they dual hinge collapse into the leg for robot mode for the, so for the sole function of allowing that. Look at that. Look at that knee hinge. Look, look at the way that piston folds around that knee and pulls the, uh, the kneecap around the leg. Already, right off the bat, the first couple of transformation bits you do are this cool stuff. There's some really neat stuff going on. I can't wait to show all this off when we, when we get them to robot mode. But you do that, and you, actually, you bring this down, and you want to take this thigh panel, which you can move during uh, for posing and stuff, but slide it up so it kind of covers those bottom two. Wait, no, you slide it down. We go, slide it down like that. So you fully expose the, the hip there. But yeah, then, then do the same thing on this leg again. Kind of bring this out, sandwich that between one side, plug this in, plug it together, and then fully collapse that onto the leg. And then slide this panel down to expose that. And then, and again, before we start transforming, you can see there's a hip hinge. I, I see this on like some Gundam models where like there's a, there's a hinge or a pin right here and you can move the whole assembly like that. But there is also a ratcheting hip at the larger circle in there. So you can bring the legs down and around and then you know ratchet them all like that. But you wanna push, for the time being, push that circle all the way up and then angle these forward. And then these panels right here, now the hip panels will open up uh, as you move things around. You can't open them. But that, t then take these panels right here and fold them down around and up like that to kind of other cover, cover that round part of the hip we just did. And there's the lower body done. Rotate him at the waist so his abs come forward and you can go ahead and collapse that joint down right there. Untab the arms from up here. Actually, untab the wheels first. There we go. Then unpeg the arms from the center spine here and rotate them forward, actually ro rotate them slightly forward, take these two side chest panel pieces and click them all the way forward until they click into place. Let me, let me raise this camera up here so we're getting more visual stuff um, here on the body. So yeah, bring the arms forward and around like this, and then here on the spine, bring this whole assembly with the, uh, the windshield screen here back, back far enough so you can push his head up through here. And then flip his head up. Oh, come on. And 
fold that forward into place like that. And then on this piece, take this back red piece, lift it up and hinge it down and around like that. Looks like I scratched it a little bit somehow. Um, and bring this down. Go ahead and um, um, there's a secondary hinge here. Go ahead and collapse that down a little bit. Then you can bring this down and then the wheels untab from right here and come up, uh, open them all the way up like that. And then they kind of rotate up and around. Make sure you put the, use this piece to kind of go under this red circle here to get them up in there. And they're just going to peg up here. Uh, the, these round pegs going to peg into the where the wheel hole was. So just peg that on right there and that'll lock that all into place. And then you can rotate this piece under and around like that. And same up over here and peg it. Slide it kind of up behind there, peg it on, and fold that piece down and around. Then collapse the upper torso onto the abs. And this is what's really cool is there's all this range of motion here in the shoulder hinge, but you can lift this red panel up, bring this down, and then set it up so the little uh, smokestack looking things are facing up. And this little hinge covers, there's all this range of motion for the articulation and then, but it still can collapse down into a more blocky robot mode. And then bring the arms down like that and extend them out like that at the elbow. Rotate and rotate. Collapse that against the body. Again, that straight up and then extend the arm, kind of wiggle it so it comes out on this pin. Rotate that, rotate his hand. that up so it's above the shoulder and there is his base robot mode here this is a little there we go that inner shoulder is a little tight and then you take these put them right back where they were before like I said they face the same direction just put these little silver stacks on his arms and there is his base robot mode he can hold um, he can hold his rifles in his hand, there's a little peg in there, a little tab that goes into the handle. Um, and he can hold his gun. Oh, get the fingers wrapped around it. Come on, we can do this. It really isn't this hard to get this gun to stay in there. There you go, wrap his hand around it. You can hold his rifle. You can also store them. I want to just get the gray ones just to show you. If you collapse them down, there's a couple different ways you can attach them to his back. You can fold this up, fold these up a little bit. Now there's this tab right here, the bigger tab, and that fits right into this slot on the gun. So if you want to have them sitting on his back like this, you can. Yeah, come here. There we go. So you can have him sit on his back like that. That allow you can also rotate them up over the shoulder if you want to give him some kind of shot shoulder cannony type position. You can also you can see there's a little angled slot right there, and that fits over this little angled tab here, like this. And you can have them sit over his shoulder like that. Although I find that tab on even the black guns, I thought maybe it would be a little tighter on the gray guns, but no such luck. Even on the black guns, that's a little loose. But you can, uh, you can attach them like that if you want. Up to you. Or you can have them hold both of them. Now, um, yeah, let's do the articulation real quick because even the manual, <laughs> this is where it gets crazy. Um, even the, the transformation manual, once you, that, done, he's complete. Now here's how you store his guns, here's how you pop open the matrix. And then there's two and a half whole pages. I mean, I guess one, two. But here's all the joints and rotation and articulation. They show it all off here. How the hands move and everything. Because this guy is nuts. And like, when I saw a lot of the pictures, they've been showing off how poseable he is. And, uh, and he looks really great, but uh, like, like with so many superposable things, 
there's some positions where it looked like he was going to have like too skinny of a shoulders or his proportions were going to be off because of having to fit all those joints and giving him that freedom and range of motion. Oh, I forgot to, one last thing, I forgot to rotate his vents forward. Um, like that. Uh, like you said, a lot of times you, when you see really poseable transformers, like especially if they've translated them into like just a, a static action figure that doesn't transform. One, if you see a really poseable transformer, a lot of times they won't transform, uh, at least from Hasbro's you know, line, of, line of thinking. Or... They're, they have to be made to be more a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more organic looking, take away from some of that boxy robot look to give them that articulation. And that's not the case here. There's a lot of really neat uh, sliding panels and hinges and things like these little bits up here and, and how the abs, we'll, we'll show off how the, uh, the abs can all collapse in to give him a really nice kind of blocky Optimus look. He doesn't look overly thin or overly organic in order to fit in all this articulation. Now we'll go ahead and pop his gun out of here. So he's got double, like, I can't tell if it's a double ball joint or maybe it's just a rope. It's got an up, up and down hinge here and then a ball joint at his head. So his head's already got a really nice range of motion. He can look down, he can look up, maybe he can look way up, he can look side to side, he can head tilt. Just a lot of great articulation right there. And then again, the arms can extend up and you can fold that down and around to give him a whole range of motion here. This piece can rotate back and forth. He's got a little bit of a, you know, these panels move forward, so he's got the range of motion here. And like you said, if you extend it out like that, he starts to get that thin joint look I was telling you about. But then you just flip this panel up and collapse that back down against the body. And again, now you've got a much more squared off blocky looking Optimus. He's got a bicep swivel. He's got dual hinge elbows, with, again with the filler piece. And you can see those little pistons there on the back of his elbow uh, working um, depending on how you how you do it there's these little pistons in here uh, on each arm and then the hinge up here bicep swivel and then each finger is fully individually articulated uh, and it can even spread I mean, look at that finger spread that's pretty crazy and then they each have all their knuckles uh, individual knuckles. There's a ball joint there at the thumb. The wrist swivels and hinges in both directions to a, a very great degree. So you got a lot of good posability there in the hands. You've got some ab, some here's some basic ab crunch here in robot mode, just as he is. But then you can unclip all this stuff, and again, it, it does expose some hinges. But you can pull this up and bring this all down, and he can bend all the way down and touch his toes. Now again, for an extreme pose, you are kind of exposing some joints, but it doesn't hinder the overall look of the robot because when you stand it back up, everything all collapses right back down, clicks into place, and he doesn't have this weird exposed abdomen. We saw we saw the the, the hips earlier, the, 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 this hinge right here, so you can get him out of the way. These panels can lift up on, on dual hinges to get up out, like like lift up on a dual hinge, so they can get all the way up out of the way for like some really long. Striding forward poses, the, the knees. We showed the knees that as, as they bend around, you can bend his legs all the way around like that and keep, and, and the knee hinge moves with it um, at the way those pistons work, which is just really, really cool. And you can see like that whole, as you bring that down, it actually pulls that panel down and around. You can pop that down into place. And then as you fold it back, you'll see that uh, thigh panel pop right back up. There's just some really neat stuff going on. Um, get them all the way back up in there. But uh, yeah, like, like, ra ra ratcheting hips, then the feet are on that second ankle rocker that the toes can fold up, and there's ankle tilt side to side. So if you need to bring that foot forward a little bit to support him, you can. Uh, I'm not even really showing off like the great range. Like he can, he can just do like just just about any pose you can think of. You can get this guy into it. Okay, I know he can do a he can do a superhero landing if you want. It's just a matter of the the old Iron Man pose. Okay, I'm not. 
I'm not doing a great job of it, but you get what I'm saying. Bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not great at it. Maybe he's about to he's about to go tackle somebody playing football. But yeah, the fact that he's this poseable and this articulated still transforms and still has a decently blocky Optimus Prime robot mode is just fantastic. I dig this design, I dig the look, and it's all pretty great. Now I mentioned the Matrix. In order to get the Matrix out, because, of, because these ch side chest panels pop forward, you can't just open the doors like you could in vehicle mode here. The instructions say to, to pop it open, you gotta mistransform some of this stuff. Well, not mistransform, detransform. Like pull this out and, and, and open these out of the way and, and lift this up here. And then move the arms back and push these panels back so that the, the, the doors have clearance. And then push the orb from the back. You can see all the way through his torso here. And then push it from the back, and then let the doors come open. I mean, I guess you can manually open the door. It says don't force the doors, and you don't want to. And you can pop it out, and you can see it's just a little orb here. That There's a couple slots in the bottom of it that fit over these little pegs. But this little gray piece rotates forward like that. Oh, hold on. Here we go. To open up the matrix. And then you take the handles from before... And they just, you can see there's a couple little circular holes on the top and bottom. And they're the same piece on either side. So you just kind of pop them in there. And they just kind of friction clips into place. And there you've got the matrix. And you can close that up. You can bring his arms forward. And you can have him hold. No, oh, come on. Oh, that one came forward too far. Have him hold the matrix. I do, I do wish some of these shoulder joints were a little looser just for ease of motion. But you can have him put his fingers through it and hold the matrix. Okay. put three fingers through. Come on. I'm, you get the idea. <laughs> you take the time to thread the fingers through and grab it. You can't hold it. Yeah, whatever. But yeah, so he's got the matrix there. And I do, like I said, I, at first I thought when I first opened it and these could fold back and then kind of spring forward. When you let go, I thought maybe he was going to store in his chest. Because I'd seen the pictures of it in his chest, and I, th I couldn't see the handles. And I thought maybe it would just, you'd fold these back, and it would slide through and sit in his chest like this. And then when you popped it out, it would open up like that. But no such luck. You do have to pop these off to, uh, to store it in his chest. And like I said, you can, in both vehicle and robot mode, have them store right here on these little hip plates. But uh, as you move them around and pose them, and they don't look bad... But as you move them around and pose them, it very is it is very easy to knock them off, and so you know be careful of that. But also, like I said, if you open this up and push these back, uh, you, once the chest doors are open, it's they just have a, a problem coming out past those these pieces when they're fully extended. But once they're open, let me get this back on here. Ah, come here. That's the other thing. This because this piece rotates. Getting this back on firmly can be a bit of a pain because it wants to slide backwards before it lets you tab it on. Come on. There we go. 
But once you have the, these panels open, you can then slide these panels back forward and uh, and have these open over the windows and bring his arms to a normal position and plug all this back in and display him with his chest open. But you do have to kind of untransform him before you can get to this point so you can get these panels open. And that's the one thing I wish they had done a little better was um, I wish that could have opened like as easily as it does in vehicle mode to, to show off the, the matrix in his chest versus uh, having to detransform him. Go ahead and get him back into fully robot mode and then we'll do some quick comparisons and then we'll wrap it up. But I mean, just absolutely fantastic he's just an amazing figure and i think if you're uh if you're on the fence uh don't be like go ahead and if you've been waffling don't 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 risk missing out uh in case this sells out you're gonna want to make sure you secured one because he's a lot of fun all right okay you know what we're just gonna pop these off get them straight and just to show him off with some other characters, here he is with from MMC with Thunderclash and Erodimus, Calidus, for some other IDW robots, other famous Matrix bearers. I was going to show him off with Earthrise Optimus, and I can't find mine. I don't know where he went. Now, here he is with Planet X's. Optimus. So a little more lithe, uh, not as bulky, but taller. And real quick, uh, I, I again, I was gonna, I was also gonna show off with uh, MMC's Chrome Dome and uh, the regular version Striker Manus, but they're back on my uh, dresser and my wife's asleep. So, but there he is with the Delta Manus look. And this was previously one of the big. Uh, articulated Optimus Prime champions, probably the previous title holder, and uh, Pexus just blows it out of the water. I mean, like this is still a great, fun figure and super poseable and, and, and a lot of, and a lot of fun. But this guy is just insane, and uh, I do wonder how. Um, like I said, I'd love to see some repaints of this. I'd love to see a Fire Guts repaint of this. Oh my God, would I love to see a Fire Guts repaint of this? But um, Nemesis, Shattered Glass, I think this mold's going to look great in all of those colors. Uh, so I, I hope they get around to doing some, even if they're convention-exclusive repaints of this guy. Because uh, he's just fantastic. And uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, if, if you're on the fence, get him. I mean, just, just, just take the chance because he's so much fun and so neat. And I, and I worry that MMC may have... Uh, set themselves a bar that's going to be hard to clear going forward because it just anything that comes out after this is going to feel like a step backward if it's not just as engineered now there's some good stuff coming i'm not like i'm not going to complain but um they really went above and beyond with this one this is just a fantastic version of optimus it's it's fun to play with it's fun to pose i literally like i was going to wait a couple days this actually just showed up today to uh before i shot this video review but i'm having so much fun playing with them like all night long with the exception of i had to cook dinner and then eat dinner um the entire rest of the night like this guy has been in my hands i've just been posing him and playing with him and messing around with him transforming him and it's just just a fantastically fun it feels great it's fun to play with and uh just a really nice representation of optimus so anyway if you've got it on pre-order, you're going to love it when it comes in. If you don't already have it on pre-order, what are you waiting for? Um, and if you're watching this from the future and he skyrocketed to his justifiable $700 price tag, uh, one, I apologize for inflation. I thought we were working on knocking that out. But also, uh, yeah, sorry you missed out when this was cheap because he's so great. Anyway, that's my review of Mastermind Creations R48 Optus Pexus, the Super Cop. Um, I don't know what else to say. 
like find a way sell if you get sell your war for cybertron unicron when it comes in and buy this guy the end